Bill number 525. 525. The last mile of the way. First and the last verse, so 525, the last mile of the way. The last mile of the way. If we all have it, let us together say, If I walk in the pathway of glory, if I were the of the day, I shall see the red king in his when I've gone the last mile of the way. When I've gone the last mile of the way, I will And I know that the joy when I go the last mile of the way. And if here I have Wise Father, who dwells in heaven above, the God who sits high and looks low, we are so grateful for uh, the privilege to not only come to you in prayer, but to be able to say thank you for bringing us out of the year 2023 into the new year of 2024. We realize it is your grace and your mercy that has brought us safe thus far. And all we can do is say thank you. We thank you, Father, for the gift of your son, Jesus, who died on the cross for our sins. You raised him for our justification. He's on your right hand, even at this moment, as we lift this prayer. Because of all that you have done, all that he has done, and all that you, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit continue to do in our lives, we certainly want to go the last mile of the way. We want to come to the end of life's journey and be able to say like the Apostle Paul, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for us a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me at the day, at that day, and not only to me, but to all who love his appearing. Thank you for those who are here, the families that are represented. Bless those who are on the way here, that they might arrive here safely. We pray for those who are not able to be with us because of sickness or or just being confined, 
We just lift them into your presence and ask you, Father, in the name of Jesus, to bless them with all they, that you see they stand in need of. I especially ask you to bless my beloved wife. Continue uh, to touch her body. We we know she's still recovering from surgery, and it's taken a little longer than we had anticipated, but we know that you are in the healing business, and that you are still the great physician. Touch her body, but also touch her spirit and her mind so she does not lose heart, knowing that all things truly do work together for good to them that love you and are called according to your purpose. Not only do we pray for her, we pray for all of our sick and our shut in. We pray for all of our senior saints who aren't able to be with us physically, but they join us when they are able via social media or Zoom or the teleconference. Father, just continue to bless us on this day as we study your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Ask these blessings and give these things. Amen. Amen. All right. We are on lesson number four, finding God in worship. We did the, the, the warm-up. That's about all we did last week. Warm up. Thank you, Brother Don. Uh, as a matter of fact, you can go ahead. The warm up. The warm up. We finished that as we talked about the in, in importance of, uh, of, of worship. Uh, when we get to the lower part of this section entitled Effort, we're going to look at what Brother Donald is passing out uh, to you. But as we continue to look at this thing called, called worship, let me let me start by, by reading this to you. I have a couple of things. I didn't run them off, but I just wanted, I mean, I ran it off so I'd have a copy. I just want to touch bases with it as we we talk about finding God in worship I looked up a number of things that talk about distractions in in worship uh, this one really struck me when when it says and the title of it is distractions in the holy place and the scripture text is Matthew 15 verse 7 and 8 and this person writes, I, I want to talk to you about mental distractions during prayer and worship. Look at who Jesus called hypocrites in our text. What about you? Your body is in church, but where's your mind? Your mouth says, I worship you, Lord, but your heart is a thousand miles away. Mind drawn to personal or family problems, preoccupied with a business matter. We have not even begun to understand how seriously God takes this matter of worship and we are to draw near to him. Not a light thing to come into God's house. If our church is a place where people play games with God, then the devil doesn't bother us. But if we are here set on true worship, a place where God blesses with the anointing of his spirit, then it is absolutely dangerous to come into his presence lightly. Then Moses said unto Aaron, this is that the Lord spake, saying, I will be sanctified in them that come night, night me or before me and before all the people, I will be glorified. The Lord said to Moses, I will not be treated as an ordinary person. If you're going to enter into my presence, you must come sanctified. All who approach my holiness must do so with carefulness and thoughtfulness because of my glory and majesty. If we sing songs of hallelujahs and our thoughts are like runaway horses, that is taking the Lord's name in vain. The Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Exodus 20 and verse 7. In the Old Testament, flippancy in worship was a very serious matter. God quickly punished those who were careless in approaching him. And then 
this writer talks about Nadab and Abihu, then it goes on to talk about Uzzah, which is a part of our, our study. But I like this sentence, and we'll get to our book now. In essence, God was saying, I'm going to show every church age, every future child of mine, that my people must be sanctified when they draw near, when they draw near to me. Uh, I, I just really fell in love with that, that particular. I had some good stuff. I said, wow, there's some good preaching in here. Or as preachers usually say, that'll preach. Uh, so as we talk about this thing called worship, uh, let's start with the workout. We have, we've already basically talked about the fact that if this man had different gods, this man would be a different man. If people today had different God, a different God, the God, they would certainly be different men and women, boys and and girls. <clears throat> so let's look at the workout. How how do we? He gives us some practical steps on how we can find God in in worship. So someone start reading the workout. Asman said that a political figure's first official act in office defines the time of service. In Second Samuel five. After his first anointing by Samuel and years of trial, adversity, and conflict, David is anointed king over all of Israel. In chapter 6, we notice that David's first official act as king of all Israel was restoring the <coughs> worship of God. But as David tried to worship God, he discovered something that many of us know. Sometimes worship can be challenging. Sometimes worship can be challenging. Because guess what happens when we come to worship God? <coughs> the devil starts. This, the devil is also present. Yes. And his purpose is to distract us <laughs> from our real reason for being here. And we live such busy lives that we can allow our stuff. I think I heard somebody on Sunday night uh, talk about his stuff and took everything in me not to get up and say behind him, you know, I got a sermon tonight, <coughs> regard not your stuff. <laughs> but I, but I, I didn't do it. I didn't do it. I just, I held my tongue. Mm -hmm. But... Human beings and even members of the Lord's church have stuff that they allow mm -hmm. to get in the way of worshiping God Amen. in spirit and, and in truth. And that's what that's what really makes it challenging. What, Kevin? We should have a deal at the back door when we walk in, we put that stuff in there. <laughs> well, in, in reality, <laughs> You should leave that stuff at home. At home, yeah. <laughs> Don't even bring it. Okay. Uh, <coughs> what's that? You leave it in the car. Leave it in the car. That's right. Don't don't leave it don't, somewhere. Don't, don't bring it out. Worship of God is so important that one of the things Satan really tries to get us to do is to be distracted, so we're majoring on minors. Mm -hmm rather than majoring on what is the most important thing, and that's God himself. Hello. So let's find out how, it, how it's challenging, Sister Cherie. Many come to, to, to the church building on Sunday as we just completing a week of God, disappointment, and adversity. Now, before she keeps reading, I haven't been to your house. We haven't talked on the telephone. I don't know what's happened between Sunday and the day, but I can guarantee you, you've already had some trials. Yeah. This new year is only three days old, yeah. and you've already had some trials. You've already had some challenges. You've already had some battles. And so when we come into worship, one of the things that is really a challenge for us is how do we worship God the way God wants us to worship him and we're wounded? 
Well, I have another sermon entitled Wounded Worship. Mm -hmm. uh, and in reality, we are wounded by the trials and tribulations of the world and of our lives. And yet, while I am wounded, I am still supposed to worship God and, and do it in spirit and in truth. Do it with enthusiasm. Do it with, with joy. Okay? Sister Cherie. Then we are challenged to dismiss all the cares of this world from our minds. It's a nice mind to use as we begin corporate worship. But for many, it's not realistic. As David tried to worship God with all his might, several things happened that, that have drawn his mind away from worship. As we discover these distractions and how David overcame them, we will learn how we, too, can find God in worship. All right, so thank you, Sister Cherie. We're going to look at three, pra he calls them three practical steps toward finding God in worship. But before we start reading this session, any thoughts about the workout so far? That is true. Okay, it's true. It, it, it is right on point. It, it, it is right on point. It is, it is, it is true. Mm -hmm. That's scary, too. It's scary? Yes, it's scary because uh, I can't find myself distracted at times. And I'm not really sure how I get off the program. Well, again. I'm not really sure how I get there. You know, one minute I'm. I'm well, there's a warfare going on. Even when we come, even when we're in the middle of worship, the devil hasn't decided because it's Lord's Day, I'm going to leave you alone. That's when he goes to work the hardest. So that's how you get there, Sister Shadow. There, there is a battle going on in our minds. Uh, Brother Nathan and Sister Sheree. There are just so many distractions. When we're on our way in here, there are distractions. Before we get into the building, there are distractions. There are distractions over here, distractions over here, distractions, distractions. Everywhere. So, and in the too. Well, that's what he's saying. Distractions right here in, in, in the building. There, there are there are certain things that I do not allow people to do to me on Sunday mornings. One of them is don't bring me no foolishness before worship. Right. I'm not going to deal with it. I have a responsibility to get up and preach God's word, first of all, so he gets the glory. Mm -hmm. And second of all, I have to I have to feed people who are hurting. Mm -hmm. I refuse to let anybody come in my office with no crazy. Mm -hmm. I've been that way for a long time. Uh, Sister Red? I don't even answer my phone or something on Sunday morning because they're making me late. Okay. <laughs> and that's interesting. You don't answer yours. I got to answer mine because it's usually a church issue. Yes. But, I mean, if it's a serious, genuine church issue, then, then yes, I, I'm going to deal with that. But if it's just some pettiness, if you want to keep some garbage going, no. No. Um, one of the things I focus on before I come into this auditorium, and I and I hope the brethren pray, and I try to get in there with their prayer, but I pray in my office. Mm -hmm. And Sister McLean is here, she and I pray, pray together. Because I know when I stand up that I'm gonna have to answer to God for how I do or do not feed his people. And hello. And it doesn't matter how much pain I'm in. Mean. <laughs> It doesn't, have, it doesn't matter what my burdens are. It doesn't matter what my troubles are. When I get up there, he expects me to feed his people. Mm -hmm. So you better wipe the tears away, pray your prayer, get on up there, sing a song if you have to. See, y'all don't realize it. A lot of times when I sing, 
I'm actually singing because I need some strength before I even start preaching. Hello. I, I need ministry. So that's one reason I try to make sure I'm in here at the beginning of service. Because I need to sing when everybody else is singing. I need you to encourage me while we're encouraging each other. I need to hear the praise. Hello. Because I'm a Christian before I'm a minister. Hello. Three, I am a doctor. Okay. Um, I turn my phone off also, but some people come to worship, they don't even want to turn their phones off. They don't want to get connected from the world on Sunday in church. And Those are distractions. Yeah, there's a mm -hmm. lot of distractions. You drive down the street in my car and they get you a text, you see them. They on their phones and everything. Yeah, they, they do that. Brother Nate? Yeah. I was just sitting here thinking. And I was looking at my thing, and I said, "Well, now that distracted me because my finger." <laughs> <laughs> Your finger distracted you, huh? See how small a thing can be that that distracts us. So let's look at this effort. This this effort that. It really takes to worship God. Someone start reading that. For David to worship God properly, it required the recovery of the Ark of the Covenant. This recovery would have required 30,000 men, a new cart, and a 50 mile trek through the mountain carrying an ark they could not touch. Yet David recognized the great significance of the ark as God's earthly promise. As a true God following king, he wished to acknowledge Jehovah's kingship by restoring the ark to a place of common in the nation. Now, thank you, Sister Catherine, before she keeps reading. Look at what they had to go through. Yes. When, when I first read this paragraph, I said, why did they need 30,000 men? Okay. But they did need a new cart because God had given them some instructions that whenever you move this off, it had to be moved on a cart that was brand new and hadn't been used for anything else. Okay. Uh, there were certain people who were told to carry the ark. Every Israelite couldn't carry that ark. It had, it's he wouldn't want to. it had to be a Levite. And they couldn't touch it. They had to carry it by the poles that God had instructed them to make, to put through the rings on the corners uh, of the Ark uh, uh, of the Covenant. Mm -hmm. 50 miles. Mm -hmm. And some of us came from five miles to worship God. Oh, definitely the roads weren't paved. They didn't have, and they didn't have shock absorbers. But he had to put forth some effort. But watch what happens when they put forth the effort. Mm -hmm. Sister Kathy? When one considers the effort put forth by David to worship God, the question must be asked, how strong is my effort to worship? Would I, I make great sacrifices? Would I travel 50 miles by foot or, or by car for that matter? As we attempt to answer these questions, it is good to be reminded of Romans 12, 1, which tells us that worship is not confined to a certain address or a point in time. Now, before Sister Kathy keeps reading, uh, Romans 12, 1 in the New King James Version says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you Present your bodies a living sacrifice. Why does Paul emphasize a living sacrifice? In the Old Testament, the sacrifices were dead sacrifices. Right. Under the New Covenant, we are to present our bodies as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable or your rational or your spiritual 
spiritual service. One, one of the problems I noticed among Christians for many, many years is some Christians feel like you can act any kind of way and think any kind of way and do anything you want to do during the week and think you can wake up on Sunday morning and all of a sudden turn on your spirituality. You can't. But, 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 not, but even with that, uh, we, we want to divide that, that our service with God. We want to continue some of our, some of our personal direction. And at the same time, we want to share God's worship at the same time. Mm -hmm. And that's, a, that's part of the distraction that was spoken about earlier. That's a distraction, but it's more than a distraction. It's the same. Mm -hmm. If you're focusing on anything else other than God, during worship, you sin. Not just on the communion service. No, not just on the enforce or reinforce that, but even let's do it all through the entire service. Well, well, let me say this. I think that this begins before we come to service. Sure, yes. It's a hard to start when we get here. It's the life that we live throughout the week. Right. Uh, uh, we can't live a ragged and Life throughout the week, and then coming here back to that, exactly. we're gonna we're gonna be pleasing to God. Right. Uh, but there's no consequences, and that's the problem. You know. But see, that that statement is really not true. There are because there are consequences. Yeah, but there's no consequences that we see as a, a as we see we see people do that all the time, and we see there's nothing gonna happen to them. We don't see it happening, but we know we're not gonna get heaven either. Because we're not really that. But I, I, we can read some other verses. Y'all, y'all need. We need to realize that God's gonna get you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Now you may think that people don't get no consequences. They may not publicly declare what those consequences are. As a matter of fact, I read a passage of scripture in the Old Testament where they didn't give the way they were supposed to give, and God said, "You get, you make this money, you take it home, and it's like a, a bag with a hole in it." Because God said, "I'm gonna get mine." So if you don't put it in the offering, I'll have it go somewhere else. <laughs> Hello. It'll be, you think you're taking all this money home, and by the time you get there, all your money is gone, because I put a hole yeah. in your bag. Yes. Just saying. You know, I think that's a distraction. Looking at someone else, what they're doing, or what in our opinion, thinking that they should be doing. That's a distraction. Yes, it is. That certainly is. And but sometimes, we have to remind ourselves that God is not going to judge me on how any other Christian behaves. He's going to judge me on how I behave. He's not going to even judge me on how anybody else treats me. He's going to judge me on how I treat Everybody else, regardless of how they treat me. Um, and so in this matter of, of, of worship, um, and, and as a preacher, I can quite often, I quite often end up in a zone where I'm not thinking nothing about the message Communicating that message and sensing the presence of God. Hello. Um, Sister Mama, Sister Mama told me after Sunday, she said, I, I leaned over to, to, to my husband and said, You ain't had no surgery. He can't, he can't possibly have had no surgery preaching like that. <laughs> <laughs> And I said, yeah, I did. And, and sometimes I still feel it. But yeah, I had surgery. But there is something about teaching and preaching the word of God where you get outside of yourself. <laughs> and you're depending on the strength and the power and the grace of God. And he does things that afterwards you know it when nobody but him. <laughs> So in our worship, 
Wick and Sister Smith just basically amen what I said from Romans 12, 1, that if I haven't worshiped God all week long, then I'm going to have a hard time coming into his presence on Lord's Day. Because we cannot turn worship of God on and off like a waterfall system. Right. It, it cannot be done. Uh, you all talked about some of those distractions. Look at what he says, Sister Kathy. It's also good to be reminded that God watches us 24 7. Mm -hmm. He sees the effort you put in on your job, your recreation, and yourself. And he sees the amount of effort you put into him. Need we be reminded that God is a jealous God? Uh oh. Amen. Uh oh. God is a jealous. You know, we we quote Romans chapter fifteen, verse four. The things that were written aforetime were written for our learning. Well, Exodus chapter twenty and, and verse number five. God said to Israel, "You shall not bow down to them." And really, He said in verse four, or really starting in verse three, "You shall have no other gods before me." You shall not make for yourself a carved image, any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them nor serve them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children to the third and fourth generations of those who hate me, but showing mercy to thousands to those who love me and keep my commandments. God is not some old man with a long beard that is saying everything you do is all right with me. God is a jealous, jealous God. Look at look at Deuteronomy chapter four, verse twenty-four. Matter of fact, verse twenty-three and twenty-four. Take heed to yourselves, lest you forget the covenant of the Lord your God, which he made with you and make for yourselves a carved image in the form of anything which the Lord your God has forbidden you. For the Lord your God is a consuming fire, a jealous God. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 5. Verse 9, again, you shall not bow down to them nor serve them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse number 15, for the Lord your God is a jealous God among you, lest the anger of the Lord your God be aroused against you and destroy you from the face of the earth. And he had told him, don't go after other gods. Don't go after the gods of the peoples who are all around you. For us, that would be the gods of the world. God is a jealous God. In Deuteronomy chapter 32, And verse 16. They provoked him, talking about Israel, or Jeshurun, which is, is, which is Israel. They provoked him to jealousy with foreign gods. With abominations, they provoked him to anger. I think a lot of people forget that, yeah, God is loving, God is... Gracious, God is merciful, but God is also righteous and holy and just. 
and God gets angry. He gets angry. We treat him so much like he's some ordinary person. Yes. Yes. And he's not. He's, he's not. He's not a DC comic creation. He's not Batman or Superman or anything like that. He is the creator of the universe. It is in him that we move and we live and we have. Does humanity understand that if God decided to take a break, uh, a break for one second, we cease to exist. But we will put forth more effort to do everything else than to worship God. Even when COVID was going on, you had folks who were still going to the movies. <laughs> Going to a football stadium with 70,000 folk. Mm -hmm. But I going to work. But I ain't coming to service because of COVID. <laughs> yeah, they're still saying. But they go everywhere else they want to go. Why? Because that's what's important to them. God is a jealous, jealous God. And I know the decision that has been made for us not to have even worship. That was a tough decision. But I know one thing that even when there were two or three folks in, I tried to preach just as hard on Sunday night as I did on Sunday morning. Yes, we do. I put as much study in the sermon for Sunday night and as much energy to preach it because mm -hmm. I'm representing God. Amen. He's going to always get my best. Hey, amen. We should put forth the effort to worship God. Many Christians don't. Amen. And if you're not committed, converted, and and uh, uh, this is what he bothers me. But um, I, I um, let's see. But he, if, if you if you understand and you make this commitment and and you know this is what your goal is, this is what you're supposed to, this is what you're striving for, and you're an example to others and stuff like that. People count on you. That's why we shouldn't. We shouldn't look to others, but we still need that. We need that build up. We need people to be there to help us be better than better. Than Sister Kat, <laughs> part of the problem is this: so many Christians are so far removed from their baptism, they have forgotten the significance of their baptism. Y'all looking at me really strange. Because when I chose to be baptized, it wasn't just in order to be saved. I was declaring my allegiance to Jesus the Christ. He was Lord then, and he's Lord now. He was Savior then, he saved and I. After walking with him, however many years we've been walking with, we ought to be more loyal to him now than we were when we went into that walk. I guess what hurts me more than anything else about this country is that we live in a day and time with a man who lies like a rook. Can have people who are willing to die for him based on lies and they won't respond to the gospel message. 
based on truth too. Mm -hmm. And some of them claim to be Christians. Yes. Our allegiance. So when we talk talking about worshiping God, we, we got to put forth some effort. Yes. I know how important you know, worship is, whether it's morning or evening worship. But my question is, and it bothers me, when you become to the point that uh, you are not, you are able, but you cannot uh, worship during the evening like you really want to. Because there is there is uh, a limit to your uh, health or your this sight. This is part of your health. Okay. Uh, if, I mean, let me help you with that. that please. First of all, if you are limited because of health mm -hmm. and are not able to come, well, you're as you get older. Sister Perry, <laughs> I, I looked at Sister Perry and she said Wednesday when I was talking to them about the New Year's Eve service, and I said, well, we understand some of you all can't drive at night. She said, no, it ain't we can't drive. We can drive, we just can't sit. <laughs> and, and I laughed because I said, okay, yes. <laughs> when you are unable to come to an assembly, that is not forsaking the assembly. Uh, if you physically can't come, then you can't come. And God's not going to hold that against you. That's why we as, as, as leaders of the Lord's church, for those who really can't come, need to come to them and take the worship to them. Yes. Hello. Hello. Yes. But we we have done we have made we have made laws where God has not made a law. Hello. So and, and we preachers are guilty. I, I, I'm one, so I'm going to you know I'm going to take the blame along with all the other preachers. We we want so much for the members to show up that we stretch the truth. In order to get folks to show up. Mm -hmm. Hello. You see, churches, even churches of Christ, haven't always had any worship service. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Y'all look at it strange. Evening worship was initially started to provide an opportunity for those who did not assemble on who could not assemble on Sunday morning. <clears throat> and for those who came who could not assemble on Sunday morning, the encouragement was to other members to be here because we're supposed to tarry one for another. Yes. Yes. Okay. So the challenge is as a human being, you've got to be honest with yourself. And when I walk in this building on Sunday morning, I'm not asking a question about none of y'all. Yes. I'm talking to God and I say, okay, is my attitude right? Mm -hmm. Is my spirit right? Am I able to worship you in spirit and in truth? Am I going to contribute to this aggregate body Worship that will lift people up. Am I going to contribute through the teaching and the preaching of the word for those who are not Christians to think about their need to respond to the gospel of Christ? Am I going to say words that will encourage those who might be discouraged? Am I going to say words that will provoke those who may have those not physically drawn back from the Lord, but inwardly drawn back from the Lord, from the Lord, 
Am I going to say something that would encourage them? Hey, I need to get my act together. Sisterhood had a man does thank you, Sister Kelly. Um, in relation to what Sister Smith was saying, the attitude has to have a lot to do with it. It isn't whether you can or can't, it's whether you will or won't. And God knows the difference. If you have a limitation, nobody knows that better than He. And so He understands when you can and can't, as opposed to whether you will or won't. Great, great distinction. Thank you. Uh, Sister Kathy and Sister Kathy. Okay. I'm glad to me that the thinking about <clears throat> the easy service. Because I'm thinking years ago, I felt guilty as well as, as not doing what God wanted me to do when I didn't make it to the easy. It was speak that we, we were supposed to come to the service, each service. We were supposed to be there. I went to front and I confessed because I said, you don't know when you don't uh, know that you do that. Mm -hmm. So for for to know that, okay, then I'm not committing a sin if I'm just coming to one service. That's the thing. I'm going to get a good understanding because you... How many services did they have on the first day of the week in the Bible? One. 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 They didn't even have Sunday school that we know of. They didn't have midweek Bible study. Mm -hmm. They followed the pattern of the synagogue worship. The first century church did. So now you hurt yourself when you don't take advantage of those assemblies and you can so you can grow. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, but again, we just have to be careful. Like I had a brother tell me it was a sin for us to sing a song other than the song that's in this song book. Well, now we're making laws <laughs> where God hasn't made a law. <laughs> Hello? Mm -hmm. Well, you saying if you don't sing it in four part harmony, Man, some of us just get one part. What are you talking about? We just glad to get the melody. We didn't go to music school. <laughs> yeah, everybody hasn't gone to, to, to music school. So as long as they sing with the spirit and with the understanding also, there's just some things we, we need to be very careful about. Mm -hmm. Because we can become like the scribes and the Pharisees. Strain at a gnat and swallow a camel. <clears throat> Kevin? Uh, yeah, I know that back then they didn't have one service, but uh, how, I mean, is there any way to know like, how long the services were? Was it all day? <laughs> I mean, was it, uh, I mean, I, I mean, it's the Lord's Day. Okay. All, all, all I can tell you is this, Kevin. On one occasion, Paul preached to midnight. Right. Yeah, midnight. Now, understand, the only way that could happen is the first day of the week for the Jews began at sundown Saturday. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Again, this is the idea of where you have to pay attention to context. So, for instance, for them, the first day of the week would have begun at sundown Saturday. Okay. For us, it begins at midnight. Yes. Okay. So we choose to have worship service at 11 o'clock on Sunday morning. We could have it at 12.01. Mm -hmm. Just wouldn't be nobody here. But mm -hmm. <laughs> the preacher. Mm -hmm. uh, so you know, even 11 o'clock is not a sacred time. You can have worship service at 9, 10, as long as you have it on the first day of the week. They didn't even have church buildings in the first century. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They 
worshipped in homes. House to house. From house to house. They worshipped in the temple and in synagogues that would allow them. They worshipped in caves when they were being persecuted. As a matter of fact, there are people doing that right now. Yes. In countries other than America. That's right. right. That's they live thing. in places that will not allow them to worship in public and live. Mm -hmm. So are they in sin because they they worship in the cave? Some people worship in places where they're not supposed to be worshiping publicly. Mm -hmm. And so when they sing, they don't even sing the words out. Mm -hmm. They just bow. Mm -hmm. Are they in sin? Now, some of us would say, yeah, if you if you scared to sing out and, and, and be willing to die, then you wrong. <laughs> you ever had your life written? <laughs> Simply for being a Christian? <laughs> Kevin said, okay, Kevin and Sister Shell, y'all got me way off of it. So uh in, in some in most cases. Each individual congregation is go by what their leadership has exactly. set up. Yeah. That's why there is a verse that does say obey those who have uh, rule. The rule over who guide you. That word rule is a, is a bad word. Mm -hmm. And because Jesus is the only ruler. Mm -hmm. Yes. But they guide you. Elders should be shepherding and guiding, not false. Amen. 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 But I, I, I'm not going to stand here and and I'll be having a discussion with the elders about a few things, but I'm not going to be having them with you. Okay. But there are a number of things that are happening that burden me. Uh, but I'm not going to. No. I love you all, but I, I, I'm not going to stand here and, and point out. You know, I'm not going to bash the elders. I'm not doing that. I, I understand. I understand. And and we we will we will talk about some things. Amen. As ministers and elders, and that's part of my job. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As we mentioned, but sometimes words are said. They can't do that. That's true. That, that, that's true. Uh, it's a hurtful thing. I, I understand. I understand. But uh, yes. Back to uh, our. Responsibility to worship 24 hours a day, uh, to worship on the first day, to come together on the first day of the week. Uh, we had a, a recent, I keep making reference to the recent uh, study that we had, the one another. Mm -hmm. But and I think a good good support to that, that is that. Um, <coughs> A number, a number of members, even even those in our family who, who, who work or who have other responsibilities on Sunday morning, who have responsibilities at other times, we have we should come together in in, in, in in our love for them. We should be willing to come together and worship them and, and serve with them. Okay. Uh, again, you're, you're you're exactly right. 
this this thing called Christianity really is about relationships. Yeah. Yes. And that's why we're called the body of Christ. It's literally the community of God's people. Okay. But it is not until everybody in the community feels a part of the community. And, and I think I mentioned this a week or two ago that I saw something on Facebook. It just struck me that just because you received an invitation doesn't mean you're welcome. Yes. And I said, wow. Because it's true. I don't know about you, but in, in my little time, I'm not going to say my, my number again, because Sister Emma Brown said, I, I got a son with me. Uh, but I've been in a number of different settings where I have been invited to things. And when I got there, I realized I was invited, but I wasn't welcome. Yes. Okay. Uh, and a lot of times, we, as the body of Christ, as churches, we have to realize we invite folks to a lot of things, but do they always feel well? Mm -hmm. that, that's, that's the issue. Mm -hmm. uh, so let's do this last paragraph. I, I'm sure planning to get further. <laughs> uh, Sister Kathy? Yes, even when we understand that all of us life work is worship. There will be times that the effort to worship becomes difficult. Things will happen along the way that will knock the word wind out of your sails. Second, Samuel 6 says that Yusa reached out and touched the ark, which is described as an irreverent act. Uh, uh, intent may have been good, but he violated the clear instructions God had given him concerning the, the ark. Numbers 4 15. Can you imagine how David felt in the middle of what should have been a glorious moment? Tragedy starts. Uh, had good intentions. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why I passed out this thing from God Question 5 4. Why did God strike us the dead for touching the ark of the covenant? Uh, in his answer, the first paragraph says God's anger burned against us and he struck him down and he died. Us as punishment does appear to be extreme for what we might consider to be a good deed. However, there are the reasons why God took such severe action. First, God had given Moses and Aaron specific instructions about the tent of meeting and the movement of the Ark of the Covenant. And dropping down past the verse, no matter how innocently it was done, Touching the ark was in direct violation of God's law and was to result in death. This was a means of preserving the sense of God's holiness and the fear of drawing near to him without appropriate preparation. So isn't that consequences though? Consequences for what Yeah, but who gave it? God, and God still gives consequences. Okay. Uh, but you but Moses and before Moses and uh Aaron. and Aaron and stuff. And so they 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 passed this to the people, they told the people what God expects too, right? They told the people what God expected, but then when Uzzah did what he did, well, number one, Moses was dead. Okay. okay. Aaron was dead. Right. So they could they couldn't do no consequences for it. God took care of it. See, there are some things that you have to let God deal with. Amen. Amen. Because, and you all are not going to like this, but even with the best of our intention, yes. we're always in danger <coughs> of sin tainting whatever decisions we make. Yeah. Because we're human. Right. 
So something might start out like that can become a sin based on how we handle it. Yeah. But God will make those things. Right? I think I told y'all last last Wednesday. I stopped. I heard you preachers praying, telling Lord, please, please remove the obstacle in this church. <laughs> I said, y'all better be careful because it might be you. Uh -huh. You're talking about, it. and I know when you when when you praying, you thinking about some other brother in this ministry, uh -huh. but it might be you. Okay, uh, God is going to. There's going to be some. There's going to be some surprises at the judgment for members of the body of Christ. There really are because. We base too much of what we do on what brethren want or sisters want mm -hmm. or, or our, our human rationale. Mm -hmm. But everything God said in the book, God means. When he says love your enemy, that is just as uh, much a command as being a member of the one church. When he commands Forgive one another. That is just as much a command as to have the Lord's Supper every first day of the week. When he says forbear one with the other, that is just as much a command as the preaching of the gospel for the salvation of lost souls. And those are the kinds of commands that we actually tiptoe around. And think we're okay as long as we do these. Mm -mm. There are all these things. And so I, I thought this was a good answer to this question about uh, the art. Uh, the second reason he said it may have to come from Gilead. Uh, because it was in Abinadab's a house, and that's where Uzzah lived. And so he started taking it for granted. Oh, how much do we take the Lord's church for granted? And then third, the account tells us the oxen stumbled. The car didn't fall, and neither did the ark. And just as the boat carrying Jesus and the disciples rocked fiercely in the storm, storm though it wasn't necessarily in danger of sinking, and yet, just as with the disciples who failed to put their faith in their master, Uzzah for a moment felt it was his responsibility to save the integrity of God and that our Almighty God somehow needed Uzzah's assistance. We have to be careful. We don't presume to take God's place. Something of God's presence, that last paragraph on the bottom in the Ark of the Covenant seems to be lost in the church today. In the time of Moses, the people knew the awesomeness of God's absolute holiness. They had witnessed great miracles when the Ark was with them. They respected that God's ways and thoughts are much higher than ours, Isaiah 55, 8 and 9. In truth, the more we try to bring God down to our worldly way of thinking or reasoning, the further away he will seem to us. Those who would draw near to God and have him draw near to them are those who approach him in reverence and holy fear. Uzzah forgot that lesson and the consequences were tragic. Uh, any final thoughts or questions? Uh, Sister <coughs> Cherie? Uh, David, first of all, David was disappointed with God right. mm -hmm. for striking us. Uh, but at least he realized something's wrong here. I ain't going no further right now. This heart right. going to stay right here. Until he came to himself 
probably went back and looked at, at the law to find out, okay, well, how are we supposed to transport this thing? And then they went and got it and brought it back the way God said. Okay. But that ark brought blessing and curse. Just depending on what you did. If you obeyed, blessing. If you disobeyed, curse. That's why Indiana Jones was out looking for it. <laughs> uh, any 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 other any other thoughts or any any questions at all? Just to share. I have a question. I have a comment or at least whatever. Anyway, <laughs> you said that the, some of us, um, some people joined, uh, became members of Church of Christ um, to be saved. Okay. Um, and I wanted to say, correct me if I'm wrong, that's one of the reasons I became a member of Church of Christ. But also, as I stayed in this and learned Sunday school, church, Bible study, I learned those things that you said uh, you knew before you became a member of Church of Christ. I call it growth for me, but if I was wrong, you weren't wrong. Part of that is our responsibility as teachers of the gospel. Mm -hmm. That when you look at Acts chapter 2, they didn't understand all of that. Mm -hmm. A lot of the stuff that I say people need to know now mm -hmm. comes from Acts 1. Okay. All they understood was that Jesus died for his sin. He was buried, he got up from the dead, and God made him both Lord and Christ. Yes. And you need to be baptized mm -hmm. for the remission of your sins. Okay. okay. And if that's what you understood, then you were saved. Yes. But our task, especially in the society that we live in, for instance, there are things that I teach people uh, that the apostles didn't have to teach people. There were no denominations then. Mm -hmm. There weren't all these different names for the church and for Christians. Now that doctrine has permeated our society and it's my task mm -hmm. to point out that error uh, mm -hmm. because people have obeyed certain doctrine to become a part of those churches thinking they're saved. Yes. Does, does, does that make sense? Yes, yes it does. Okay. It, also, yes. it also makes sense when you say that um, people that tell you that they're just as strong now as when they got baptized, and you say, uh, that's a problem because you should be stronger. You should be strong. So that also let me know that, you know, learning is going on, and as Kathy said, when you know better, you do better. And, you know, even even as a gospel preacher now, I mean, I'm 70 years old, you know, it's blessed me to still have a voice and the health and the energy to preach and to teach. Now I'm having to focus on some new stuff because there are congregations that are wearing the name Church of Christ Mm -hmm. that are teaching and practicing not just some of the denominational stuff, even more than that, that now I have to point out the people. Mm -hmm. Okay. And they have access to it on Facebook and on uh, uh, Zoom and on YouTube. And so they bring that stuff up. As a gospel preacher, it's my responsibility to point out the difference. Thank you. Does that help? Yes. Okay. Brother Donald, one of my elders, he wants to, he wanted to say this. I had to get down. So say, you know, you have some thoughts and then you can do the announcements. You know, the thing about a song is that I know our brunch with them. Uh oh. Sing them. Mm. Watching them put some blood. Cleanse and made holy. Humble and lowly. Humble and lowly. All of these things we're doing is right in the sight. You know what? You brought up that song. 
that's really a, a song where you can do yourself a favor and change one word. Yeah. Is my heart right? Yeah. That's what I think about when, when whenever we sing that song. Is my heart right with God? Sister Brown. You done forgot. I know. You had you were waving at me and I forgot to call on you. Uh, to show you just one last word as to what how I take seriously what we do. Uh, as I put the New Year's Eve program together, uh, I wanted it to be spiritual. And I wanted it to be uplifting. And I wanted it to be as close as possible to our worship service. There were people who asked me, can I sing a solo? I said, no. Well, are we going to have group singing? No. Oh, we used to do, and I, I know what, 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 what we used to do. But this is the third Sunday fellowship plus a New Year's Eve service. It's during our evening worship time. I've asked brethren to read scripture and to lead prayer. That's always appropriate in, in worship. And I've asked them to pray about certain things. And, uh, but I wanted, and you, do you all realize that's the first time in a long time since COVID, we, this building has been full? Yes. yes. And do you realize that was some of the best singing I've heard in a long time because we were doing it together. We were doing it together. Um, so as we as we go into 2024, pray for me, pray for the elders, pray for the deacons, pray for the members, but but pray for us. Uh, the challenge is monumental. Our society is deteriorating. Our brotherhood is deteriorating. I mean, it used to be there was just a black church and a white church. Not anymore. There are divisions within the white brotherhood. There are divisions within the black brotherhood. Even to the point where we have different lectureships. And it all depends on what camp you're in, whether you're invited to speak on that particular lectureship. Folks, I just don't believe that's what Jesus was praying about in John 17. I don't believe it. So pray for us, pray for me. Um, I'm just going out on the hedges and the byways, and I'm a fine folk. They won't come here. So if y'all see me stand outside Walmart, just know, you know, I ain't selling no candy. <laughs> but I am. Y'all laughing. I'm serious. I'm going to contact as many businesses to give me permission to stand out there two or three days a week and just pass out house to house, heart to heart, and church bulletins and invite folk to have Bible studies with me. I'm putting together a calendar so the elders can look at it and we can tweak it where it needs to be tweaked. But, you know, Thursday, Thursday, got to come back. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. I want non-members here asking me Bible questions so I can give them Bible answers. Mm -hmm. And so we can get them to obey the gospel of Christ. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. Walmart going to let me? Okay. Okay. So y'all, so when you see me out there, y'all know I'm not working for Salvation Army. <laughs> Brother Donald. But I am working for the Lord. But I'm yes, yes. Thank you, Brother McLean, for that class and teaching that time. Dedicated and devoted class. Hi, thanks a lot, my university family. I have sinned repented and asked for the prayers of the church that I may grow stronger. 
This is Sister Lydia Murphy, and we'll, we'll include her in our prayers. Announcements and prayer requests, Wednesday, January 3rd. The next men's training class is Saturday, January 6th at 10 o'clock a.m. All our brothers are asked to come and be here. No, not asked. Urged. Urged. <laughs> urged to be here. All our men. And we'll put the word out. Funeral services for our beloved Douglas McDuffie will be Saturday, January 6th at 1 o'clock p.m. at the Cedar Crest Church of Christ in Dallas, Texas. And will be live streamed on the Cedar Crest Church of Christ Facebook page. A link is provided on our website at our www.university1885coc.com, and I'll have this information available to us. Our prayers are requested for Sister Linda McLean as she recovers from surgery. Prayers for Sister Sheree Warner and family. Prayers for Sister Ellen Smith and for Brother James McFall. Our continued prayers for Brother Manuel Beeman, who was with us on Sunday. Prayers for Sister Emma Brown and family. Prayers for Sister Nicole Bird. And our prayers are continued for Sister Sandy Pollard. Sister Lydia Murphy and family. We've already mentioned Sister Lydia Murphy. Prayers are continued for Sister Brenda Taylor Hines. And our brother, Brother Melvin Flowers. We want to continue our prayers for Brother Arnold Patterson. Brother Arnold had surgery. He has a desire to be here with us in class. Our continued prayers for Sister Peggy Jackson and for Sister Pat Gaines. Continued prayers for the bereaved families of the loss of loved ones and for their caregivers. Please be sure to practice good housekeeping and let's just take all of our, all our trash with us. Are, are there additional prayer requests, confessions? Sister Kathy. I'm asking the church to pray for me. I'm happy I was able to come to the two Wednesday afternoon classes but, um, and um, that the children back to work next week and that hopefully that everybody that comes back will be okay. Thank you. Sister Brown. Uh, I'm still asking for prayer for the young man that was stabbed by his wife. He's not in the hospital. He's on work study. I'm asking for us for the elder family, my daughter, Brenda, one of her brother in law, the 15 year old girl that last year. Yes. That was for her brother in law, Brenda. Thank you. Sister Warner. I prefer for uh, me and my health. Yes, we want to, and we want to keep you in our prayers, Sister Mama. Are there other prayer requests, Sister Shell? I ask prayers for my husband who's under the weather. Um, I also ask prayers for my daughters, uh, especially Pam and their family that they're traveling. And hopefully, God's will, they'll make it back home. Um, I also ask prayers for me. Yes, and my husband. Okay. We want to keep all of our we want to keep all of our family members in prayer who who have had uh, <clears throat> the advantage of traveling for the holidays and for these days uh, to be together with loved ones and, and, and friends and family. Are there other prayer requests? Other dependents? Let us go to our Lord and Savior in prayer. God, our Father in heaven, we thank you so much, Lord, for this hour. We thank you for our minister, Brother Terrence McLean, who has stood boldly and, and, and overseen this, this lesson. We thank you, Lord, for the responses and for our emotions and feelings that have been touched by the words of our, of our study. We want to always, Lord, be found doing those things that are pleasing unto you. And so, Lord, we ask you to guard guide our heart, touch, touch our personal lives that we may be exemplary, that we may be examples of those who have who answered your, your clarion call, of those who have heard your word and have been redeemed by your Holy Spirit. Yes, Lord, we thank you for Jesus. We thank you for the price that he paid and we thank you for the advantage he has given us. Every occasion 
on the first day of the week. Every occasion when we wake up and, and, and know that it is you, Lord, who causes us to be alive. We thank you for your blessings, your goodness, and for your love. Thank you for Sister Lydia Murphy. We pray for her. We pray with her. And we ask your forgiveness. We ask her forgiveness. Sister Lydia is with us in class. She's with us in spirit. And so we thank you for her presence. We thank you, Lord. Further, we, uh, we, we love, we ask prayers for Sister Kathy. Sister Kathy is returning to the classrooms. Thank you, Lord, for her, her, her knowledge and, and her ability to stand firmly and to stand boldly and to, and to be concerned about the students and be concerned about our young people. So we just pray that for Sister Kathy, for her strength and her health. We pray that the classes which she will return to have been maintained and that they'll be more faithful and they'll be health-wise, they'll be full of, full of theory and full of fire, ready to return to class. We thank you, Lord, for Sister Brown. Sister Brown has prayers. She has prayers for her young man, her grandson. Mm -hmm. Who, who 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 was having difficulty? Uh, we pray for Sister Brown, and we pray with her. There is a young person in Sister Brown's family who had an incident and, and involved with 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 some violence, and we pray for her, the young lady, and we pray for the young man, and we pray for the family. We just pray that Sister Brown's strength and her love and her prayers will uh, cause you, Lord, to reach down and touch them and, and to change the things in their, in their lives of those, those young people. We just pray for their continued effort to hear the words that Sister Brown is always, always mouthing to them. And Sister Brown is always praying for her, for her young people and her grandsons and, and, and Demaria and, and, the, and the young people in her family. So we pray for her. Bless Sister Emma Brown, bless, bless Sister Warner. Sister Warner asks prayers for herself and for her family and her young people. So Lord, we just pray a special prayer uh, on behalf of parents and grandparents and, and, and parents who, 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 who are in love with the fact that we have young people and we have, we have a responsibility to, to guide and direct them in the ways of, of, of your love. And so we just pray that you'll bless us and we just pray that you'll be with us, Lord. We just pray that our prayers will, will go up on behalf of our young people. So, uh, a number, a number of personal testimony is due to, to my prayers and our families who prayed for us and who prayed with us. So we just pray for praying mothers and fathers and, and grandmothers and grandparents. Uh, sister, Sister Shell asks a special prayer, Lord, we pray for her and we pray with her and we pray for Sister Tamron and we pray for the members of Sister Shell's family. Thank you, God, for always causing us to come together wherever we can, Sister Shell is here with us and we just pray for those occasions. We pray for every heart and every spirit that is here with us today. We pray for your blessings, your goodness and for your love. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for Brother McLean. Thank you for Sister McLean. Bless her in a special way, Lord. Strengthen and encourage her and cause us through your will to come back and worship with us in perfect health in the next appointed time. We just pray, Lord, for, bless for your blessings, your goodness, and your love. Help us now, Lord, in Jesus' name. Let us all say amen. 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 Yeah. 18. 18. 18. <laughs> you can count it.